This is our first video for section 5.3, Recursively Defined Functions and Sets. You'll notice that in the recursively defined functions, the recursively defined sets, and even in the recursively defined structures, which we are not going to cover in this video. Um, and then in the next video, when we talk about structural induction, all of our steps are the same for the most part. So we're saying that there's going to be two parts to the function or to the definition. And the two parts are the basis step and the recursive step. So the textbook calls them the basis step and recursive step, so I'm going to call them that as well. So again, the basis step for a function specifically specifies the value of the function for the first term or sometimes terms. And how many terms? It depends on how many are necessary for the recursive step. So the recursive step gives a rule for finding subsequent values using a previous value or values. So if you have a function that has just one previous value, then your basis step will have just one value. So it's a starting off point. If your function asks you to take two values, then you would have to have two values in your basis step. And again, for instance, if we have this recursive definition, this recursive definition says the basis step is f of zero is equal to three. Now, before we find f1, f2, f3, I want you to notice how similar this is to where we said uh, when we talked originally about sequences and series and said a of zero is three and then a of n plus 1 is equal to 2a sub n plus 3. This is exactly the same thing, uh, except we're talking about functions instead, but it's really uh, the process is the same. So for instance, this one asks us to find f1 using the inductive step. So f1 says, okay, if I have to find f of 0 plus 1, that I'm going to take 2 times f of 0. Well, we know f of 0 is 3, and that's why we needed the basis step, and then plus 3. So that's 6 plus 3, or 9. Now to find f2, that's going to say 2 times f1. Well, f1 we just determined was 9, and then plus 3. So that's 18 plus 3, or 21. And then f3 says to take 2 times f2, which was 21 that we just found, and then plus 3, which is 45. So again, the same process that we went through here um, with our sequences and series, um, and now it's just using functions instead. For this first practice, instead of finding the first few terms of a sequence where it's already been defined for us, they're actually asking us to find the recursive definition of the sequence. So notice they're giving us the fact that the sequence, a sub n, is found by taking 6 times n for each value of n. So when they ask us for the recursive definition, remember we're going to have the basis step and the recursive step. And so the basis step should give one or two or however many values that we need. And the recursive step defines all subsequent values based on the initial value. So before we can do that, let's just find a few values in our set. So a zero would be six times zero, according to our definition. Six times zero is zero. A one is six times one or six. A2 is 6 times 2, which is 12. A3 is 6 times 3, which is 18. Now, for the basis step, it's pretty straightforward. We know that it's probably just going to be that our first value is 1. I mean, sorry, is 0. Um, but what you have to be careful of is you should do the recursive step first because that will tell you how many values you need for your basis. So what we need to do is say, if I'm basing it completely on the previous value, how do I get from zero to six? 
Again, if I'm basing it on the previous value, how do I get from 6 to 12? Well, here I've added 6, here I've added 6, here I've added 6. So it appears that all I have to do to find f of n plus 1 is to take the value of f of n and add 6 to it. Now, if you'll notice, I've only used one value. So because I've only used one value, I'm going to define f of 0 to be 0. And again, you can always go back and test it and make sure you did it right. So based on this, f of 1 would be 0 plus 6. And again, f of 2 would be 6 plus 6. And we can see that we are getting the correct results. Here's a question for you to try. So if you would, press pause, try this question, then press play to see how you did. So again, we're looking for the two parts, the basis step and the recursive step. And just like before, we should spend a little bit of time finding the first few values so that we can then come up with some sort of pattern. So we're looking at 10 to the power of n. So a zero is 10 to the zero, which is one. A one is 10 to the first, which is 10. A two is 10 squared, which is 100. A three is 10, oops, sorry, <laughs> 10 to the third, which is 1000. So again, when we're defining things recursively, we're saying to get from here to here, what did I have to do? Well, it appears that I multiplied by 10. And to get from here to here, I multiplied by 10. And from here to here, I multiplied by 10. So my basis step is just going to be one value because as I can see, all I have to do is take one value and multiply it by 10. So my recursive step, f of n plus 1, says take whatever you had in the step before and multiply it by 10. So I'm going to just put 10 f of n. The basis step means I just need one value because I'm only using one to find the next value. So f of 0 is equal to 1. And that is your result. Now we're going to take a look at recursively defined sets. And I do just want to point out that the book also covers rec recursively defined structures, and we are not going to cover that in this video. So again, if I'm looking at a set, it's still the same idea. Instead of a function, now it's a set. The basis step, instead of being a function of a small value, it's an initial collection of the set of elements. And the recursive step just says, here's how to find new elements in the set based on ones that are already in the set. So we're going to take a look at this example. And this example is going to be very important because we're going to continue looking at this example in the next video. So you might feel like I'm sort of beating a dead horse as I go through this example. And I apologize for that, but it's so that we can talk about it again in the next video. So this asks us to find the elements contained in the set defined by the basis step, which is that 0, 0 is in the set. So basis tells me 0, 0. And then the inductive step is if a comma b is in the set, then a comma b plus 1, a plus 1 comma b plus 1, and a 2 comma b plus 1 is in the set. So let's find what happens when we do our first run through using 0, 0. So notice a is going to stay the same. I'm going to add one to b. a is going to add one, and I'm going to add one to b, and a is going to add two, and I'm going to add one to b. So this is going to give me a is the same and add to b, a is plus one, add to b, a is plus two, add to b. So that's what happens my first time through. Then I'm going to take those values and I'm going to do the same thing. And obviously we're not going to find all of the elements in the set because this set is infinite, right? Because we can just keep adding and adding and adding. But what we're doing is we're looking for a pattern. How can we sort of define or talk about what's in the set? And we, in order to do that, we have to find some of the values that are in the set. So again, A is gonna, so I'm gonna start with zero, one. 
A is going to stay the same, and I'm going to add one to B. A is going to stay the same. I'm sorry, A is going to add one, and I'm going to add to B. And A is going to add two, and I'm going to add to B. Now I'm going to do the same thing with one, one. So A is going to stay the same, and I'm going to add one to B, but that would just give me one, two. So I'm not going to write it again. And then A is going to stay this, or A is going to add one, so that's two, and I'm going to add one to B, so that's two, two. Yep, we already have that one. And then a is going to add 2, so that's 3, and then add 1 to B, so that's 3 comma 2. And then I'm going to look at 2, 1, and I'm going to do the exact same thing. So for 2, 1, A is going to stay the same, and I'm going to add 1 to B, so that's 2, 2, we already have it. A is going to increase by 1, so that's going to be 3, 2, I already have it, and A is going to increase by 2, so that's 4, 2. So hopefully you're kind of seeing a pattern for a last value of zero, the first value is zero. For a last value of one or a second value in our ordered pair, we have zero, one, and two. For our second value of two, we have a first value in the ordered pair of zero, one, two, three, and four. So what I'm kind of seeing here is that whatever this second value is, this is going to be 2 times that second value or less. So here 2 times 2 gives me 4 and notice it's 4 all the way down. So let's just test that theory. Let's find our third iteration. So if we look at our third iteration, A stays the same and we're going to add 1 to B. A adds 1 and we're going to add 1 to B. Oh, sorry, that's three. And A adds two, and we're going to add one to B. Then I'm going to do the same for one, two. So A stays the same, and we add one. A adds one, and we add one. So that's two, three. And then A adds two, and we add one. Oops, I'm confusing myself. So three, three. Now I'm going to move on to two, two. A stays the same and I add one, so that's two, three, and then three, three, and then four, three. And now I'm moving on to three, two. So that's three, three, four, three, and five, three. And then I move on to four, two, and that gives me four, three, five, three, and six, three. And so again, do I notice that same pattern? I do. So We'll talk about this again in our next video on structural induction, but what seems to be happening is in the case of A comma B that's in the set, it seems to be that A is less than or equal to 2B. So again, if I take the second value and I multiply it by 2, A is going to be less than or equal to that. And that certainly holds true here. Six is equal to that, and all of the values less than that are obviously less than. Same thing here, same thing here, same thing here. Up next, we're going to look at structural induction, which is another type of mathematical induction using recursive definitions.